In this video, we're going to look at two more ways to represent our data. We're going to look at pie charts, and we're also going to look at something called a cumulative frequency diagram. So I've added two columns for our data. I've added the angle, which we're going to use for our pie charts, and I've added a column for the cumulative frequency. So the angle then. On a pie chart, the angle or the area represents the frequency or the proportion of data in a given category. So what we can see here is we have 27 out of a possible 60 vehicles with just one person in. Well, 27 over 60 is just under a half. So on a pie chart, that is going to be represented by just under 180 degrees. Just recall that there are 360 degrees in a circle. But we need to find out exactly how big that angle needs to be. Now, the way that we would do that is we would do 27 sixtieths as a fraction, and then we would times it by the 360 degrees in a circle. So I'm going to type the formula in here. We would do equals 27, which is our frequency, over 60, which is our total pieces of data. So 27 over 60 is the fraction of vehicles that had only one person in. And then we're going to times that by the 360 degrees of the circle. And that gives us 162 degrees to represent 27 people out of 60. We're going to do exactly the same now for vehicles with two people. So we're going to do equals, open brackets, 18 divided by our 60 people. So 18 sixtieths of the vehicles had two people in. And I'm going to times that again by the 360. And I'm going to continue doing this down the table. So now we've got 9 sixtieths times the 360. And next we've got 4 sixtieths. Times the 360. And finally, I have 2 sixtieths times the 360. And you'll notice that all of those angles add up to 360. They need to, otherwise we wouldn't be representing all of our data. What I've just done there with the formulas in each of these boxes, you could just as easily do on your calculators and input these values manually, particularly if you're not using Excel or a similar package to document your data. You may be doing this by hand, in which case you would need to do those on your calculator. So next, we're going to go across and we're going to plot a pie chart to represent our data. OK, so now we see on the screen our data on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have a pie chart template. These pie chart templates have been made available for you on the study platform. Really just in case you don't have access to a compass, I don't want this to prevent you from pushing on with a tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot our data on our pie chart. Now the first segment that we're going to plot is for vehicles with one person and we need 162 degrees to represent those. Now on these pie chart templates, I've given you a datum line here. So when we use our protractor, what we need to do is make sure that the center of our protractor sits on the center of the circle, like so. And from our datum line, we need an angle of 162 degrees. And it doesn't matter if you measure 162 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise, so long as that first segment is an angle of 162 degrees. So 162 degrees on our protractor is there. So there I have my first segment. I'm just going to remove the line produced by my protractor. And that segment there represents vehicles containing one person. I'm going to move on to my second segment. And my second segment is going to be 108 degrees. So 108 degrees from my starting point is there. And mark out my segment. Once again, I'm going to remove the line produced by my protractor. I'm going to shade the box. And that represents cars with two people in. 
Okay, my next segment is 54 degrees. Okay, so 54 degrees from the line of my previous segment. Is there. Okay, once again. Can complete that section. Can remove the line produced by my protractor. Shade my segment and label it. I have two more segments. I need one that's 24 degrees and represents four people. So 24 degrees from the start of my last segment. Is there. And my remaining segment will be the remaining 12 degrees. So I'll just draw that in for completeness. That will be 12 degrees and it will be for vehicles with five people. Once again, to complete this, you would need a title. This time we'll go for something a little more descriptive. We'll go for number of people in a vehicle during a traffic survey. And there we have a pie chart to represent our data. So finally, we're going to be looking at our cumulative frequency graph or our cumulative frequency chart. And what the cumulative frequency shows us is how the frequencies add or combine together. So for example, we have 27 vehicles with one person in. If we were to look at the number of vehicles with two or less people in, i.e. one or two people, then we would need to add those two frequencies together. Then if we were going to look at the number of vehicles with three or less people in, we would need to add the number of vehicles with three people in to the number of vehicles with two people in to the number of vehicles with one person in and so on. So what a cumulative frequency really is, is a collection of frequencies up to a given point. So the number of vehicles with one or less people in is just 27. But the number of vehicles with two or less people in will be 27 plus 18, which is 45. So there was 45 vehicles with two or less people in. Now when it comes to determining the number of vehicles with three or less people in, we would need to do the 27 plus 18, which is 45, plus 9, which is 54. So there were 54 vehicles with three or less people in. If we want the number of vehicles with four or less, we would need to add 27 to 18 to 9 to 4, which would give us 58. So there were 58 vehicles with four or less people in, and number of vehicles with five or less is going to be our total frequency of 60. So there were 60 vehicles with five or less people in, as we'd expect in a survey of 60 vehicles. So next we can plot our cumulative frequency diagram, and for this all we're going to need is our number of vehicles and our cumulative frequencies column. Okay, so this time on the left hand side we have, have our data. Once again we have the number of people in a vehicle denoted by a lowercase n, and in the second column we have this time our cumulative frequency, or our added or combined frequencies. On the right hand side we have our graph paper with our x-axis having n, the number of people in each vehicle, and our y-axis this time represents the cumulative frequency rather than the frequency, and we have our title car share traffic survey data in order to complete that cumulative frequency chart. This time, our cumulative frequency goes up to 60. So our y-axis is going to need to range from 0 to 60. So we're going to go 10, 20, 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Again, doing our best to maximize the space on the page. So the number of vehicles with zero or less people in is going to be zero. The number of vehicles with one or less people in is 27. The number of vehicles with two or less people in is 45. The number of vehicles with three or less in is 54. The number of vehicles with four or less in is 58. And the number of vehicles with five or less in is 60. So we can join those lines up to complete our cumulative frequency graph. And there we have it.